Welcome to the Broker Growth Accelerator, where we discuss how real estate brokers can accelerate their growth by improving their agent recruiting and retention. I'm your host, Jim Turner, and today we'll discuss growth tactics with our special guest, who is a subject matter expert in the industry. Let's get started. Hi, my name is Jim Turner, and I'm the CEO of Broker Kit, and I'll be your host today. Today on the show, we're excited to have Sherry Johnson, a very successful real estate coach and consultant who's joined us to discuss uh, her experience growing her business. Sherry, welcome to the Broker Growth Accelerator. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. So maybe just let's start out by tell us, you know, how long have you been in the business and, you know, how did you get into, you know, the real estate business and progress up to kind of the role of, of uh, coach and consultant? So I am in Cleveland, Ohio, and born and raised Cleveland, Ohio, um, right on Lake Erie. And I actually got my license in 1996. I had been uh, actually dated a builder's son, this guy. Um, his father was building my parents' house, and I was 25. No, I think I was 22 when I dated him. And uh, I dated a son of a builder and the builder told me over and over again, you know, kid, you should be selling houses. You should be selling houses. And at the time um, I was selling commercial printing and uh, managing um, my father's printing company, a uh, commercial printing company, which they had started, you know, from $500 and neither of them had gone to college, wildly successful, amazing, you know, number one printing company in Ohio. Um, about 300 employees, and it was awesome. And so I kept saying, there's no way I'm selling houses. And um, my parents had an opportunity to sell their company. I went into management consulting for a little bit, uh, strategic business planning, consulting, um, which I have a degree in organizational behavior and leadership development and management. So I was doing that. And I wasn't dating that guy anymore, but I, my mom told me, just go get your real estate license and have it in your portfolio is what she told me. And so I decided to get my real estate license. And um, that was in October, I think, yeah, end of 96-ish. And um, I was off and running. And it was kind of funny because, um, you know, my dad being self-made, uh, success successful business owner, you know, he said to me, you might not sell a house for six months. You might want to like get another job. And I, I distinctly remember saying, you know, if I don't sell a house in six months, like I'm not doing this, this will be a colossal fail and I will get a different job. And, you know, I was like, no, it's not taking six months to sell one house. And we knew we didn't know anybody in real estate really. Um, and so I had a car payment. I was 26 years old. I had a car payment, a condo payment, and a really big shopping habit. I was single and um, arguably I still have a big shopping habit. And and so I just, I had to make money. And so I had five sales my first month and I was off and running. And I think I sold, I, I sold like 27 houses my first year back, back in 97, which was kind of a, didn't see that often. Um, today people do that. Um, but it was, it was fun. And so after my first year, this is kind of the cool part. After my first year in real estate, I said, with my training background, with my love for public speaking and, um, you know, all these things I wanted to do, I just said, I'm going to have a national speaking, coaching and consulting company one day. Um, that was in 1997. And, uh, you know, fast forward um, 20 years later after, you know, being an executive and a bro you know, broker for a large um, company, 20 years later, I, I launched Sherry Johnson Coaching in 2017. And I've never looked back. It's It's been an absolutely phenomenal, amazing career. And I love it. But what I love the most is probably that I get to engage at every level. So 10 years after selling, I went into management purposefully. Uh, I was selling somewhere between like 14 and $18 million a year by myself without a team. And I purposefully went into management, you know, leadership and management um, so that I could run a company and run, help run the company that uh, I was working for. And then my management leadership career took off. I went from managing an office of about 50 to 70, maybe 80 agents um, to managing an office with 150 and then managing a whole 
you know, territory of North, Northwest Ohio started with 500 agents and grew it to 750 agents in about four years and 13 offices. It was a lot of fun and grew the sales volume from 600 million to uh, 1.7 billion in four years. And, um, you know, that was amazing as well. So trained and coached a lot of agents, trained and coached a lot of managers, uh, recruited and trained thousands of people. And, um, and so it has been, you know, that's the part I love and, and, you know, executive coaching, we offer everything from agent teams, manager, broker, recruiting, executive corporate restructuring and, um, you know, consulting at a high level for small, medium and very large size companies. So um, it has been an absolute phenomenal now almost six years of uh, having Sherry Johnson coaching and consulting. And it's just been, it's been a dream come true. And, you know, I believe people always ask me like, what's your favorite part? And, you know, I just had an unbelievable coaching call with a top agent that, you know, got me so excited. And he said, you need to go back into sales. But that's what's so great about it is I, I stay actively, you know, engaged with buyers and sellers and still have an active license. I'm still, you know, I know what's going on in the market, but um, there's nothing better than watching a manager grow, you know, learning the techniques and, and, and great strategies that we've developed over the years and that I've put together into our coaching program. But it's fun. I mean, every, every level excites me. Um, you know, whether I'm talking to a group of managers uh, about recruiting or coaching their agents or, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, team leaders trying to recruit, it's exciting. So it's been, it's been awesome. And, and especially also meeting you and your company. And I'm just glad I'm here. This is, this will be a fun talk today. Awesome. Thanks so much. Well, and uh, super impressive career there starting out with, you know, kind of sink or swim. You got six months. You cr sounds like you crushed it in one month and, you know, up from there. And, you know, it's kind of interesting when you brought in the, the concept of, you know, getting back into sales, right? So, you know, a lot of what you're focusing on is, you know, if you follow that progression is building leverage, right? And moving your way up so that you're, you have a bigger and bigger impact. And, you know, the reason we exist here at BrokerKid is to help um, bring that impact by helping brokers focus on the talent funnel. We believe uh, brokerage is just like any business. There's two primary funnels out there. There's the sales funnel and the talent funnel. You know, most brokers, whether they're a broker owner, managing broker or leadership, are super focused on the sales funnel. And it makes sense because they all came up through the yes. sales side. But the way that you bring scale in a business is by build, building a team of amazing people to surround yourself and and you know, and that's how you grow a business. So that's kind of what we really wanted to talk about today is what are your thoughts and recommendations to kind of the, the brokers out there around what they can do around their talent funnel. And so, you know, just like the sales funnel, we believe, you know, there's, you know, uh, kind of a funnel that you progress people through. Um, and let's start at the top. So, you know, it, it, you know, and just assume this is any kind of managing broker, broker owner out there listening, and this is going to depend in many cases on their brokerage and their unique value proposition and probably their comp model. But what do you tell people, you know, what should they be looking for in an agent? Let's start at top of the funnel. Like what's the ideal agent knowing that that's going to be different by brokerage, but what are the things they should be looking for um, and why? Yeah, you know, I love, I love top line revenue and we, can build an organization and growth by those two things, right? Recruiting is one huge, you know, every year you are losing agents that are naturally, uh, the natural attrition that happens in an office. I mean, so recruiting has to be top of mind. Um, when looking for an agent right now, um, I, I always like to ask people, you know, if they're new, give them, you know, a, um, a couple of easy questions like, when do you want to be licensed? How much money do you want to make? How much money do you have to make? And I ask those two questions because I like to say, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I love houses and I love people. And I say, mm, this is a solving problems business, right? And it's it's not all about going into great houses. And um, so some of those people we know we're going to come in contact with uh, that are new agents. But you know, when recruiting new agents, you know, I'm all about choose a career in real estate and change your life. You know, there's no ceiling for income. You can, you know, it's, it's, 
you can grow into this business while you raise your family. You can uh, you can have it all, work life balance. And so I remember when I got licensed, you know, the management f- feeling then, and it still is out there still, is that you know we told new eight new people they had to it's going to take a while before you get a sale, and I, I I completely disagree with that. I think we should be onboarding people into sales while they're getting their license and doing the things that, you know, doing the things that will help them immediately get a listing. And so asking people at the front end, you know, how motivated are you? Because you can have a great career in real estate. What do you have to make? What would you like to make? What's your timeline? What did you previously do? Who's your sphere of contact? Like, who do you know? Um, where do you live? And you know, really, why do you want to get your real estate license? And besides telling me that you like people and you love houses and get some good answers before the interview and, and then decide if you're going to interview them with new people, you know, you can go out and um, find them just the way that you would find listings. You know, if you have if you map out where everyone lives, we call this geo target recruiting. Um, but you can go out and find people in a neighborhood where you want listings and you don't have an agent who lives there. And what better way to recruit that person, you know, by saying, choose a career in real estate and change your life. Uh, we have unlimited marketing, unlimited coaching, unlimited training, uh, unlimited income potential and come meet with us. And I've recruited more people through geo target farming of recruits. And we teach them how to list. And then now they're listing in their own neighborhood, right? So you just sort of killed two birds with one stone. You recruited someone in a specific neighborhood where you want listings and teach them how to be a listing agent. And you'll dominate that that subdivision that they live in. With existing agents that were out there recruiting, you know, who's the ideal? It depends, right? If I want market share and um, yeah, I might go after top agents, teams, I think any broker who's listening to this and thinking, oh, I don't want top agents or high split agents, that's really um, unrealistic, number one. And number two, I want to have an anchor person, you know, instead of being resentful that these top agents make a lot of money or these teams partner with them, look at this as a business decision. I'm not saying pay them 110%, but, you know, Having the biggest agent or team in your community brings more success for all the other agents on your team. And if you look at it in terms of, you know, partnering with top agents, partnering with those agents who have teams, finding solutions for being really extremely team friendly, um, you can recruit those people. I think, um, you know, obviously, depending on what your comp model is um, and your compensation package that you give to agents that are existing agents in your community, competitors up and down the street, you know, it's easy to go after, I think that that first tier, the zero to three years, people that are zero to 3 million, you know, and just say, Hey, we didn't have a chance to meet with my coaching, with our systems, with our tools and our marketing and our brand, you know, we could double or even triple your business uh, in less than two years or even this year. And if you believe all of this, right, you can recruit people by monetizing the value of your your offering. Um, I like going after the middle of the road, like that mid-tier producer, maybe three to 10 million. To me, that's, that's, that's fun and easy. I also think that, you know, going for uh, agents in your community that you could really add value. You just have to know what am I giving these people that they don't have and why would they want to come here and separate those lists of people, you know, that zero to three newer agents you didn't interview or you didn't get. There's also a great market for going, uh, you know, recruiting people that are on teams, you know, that are at other companies on teams. They're usually some are happy. Some have a great team leader and they love their team and they're never going to leave. Some of them aren't happy. Um, and those are sometimes people that really want their own identity. Um, and they can be a really good source of, of who to recruit. But in the end, you have, and I think Jim, what, you know, we've talked about before is that most brokers don't have a written plan. Right. Let's start there. Like they don't even have a plan 
It's like they set goals and everyone does this. They set a goal and they hope they get it and they have no real concrete path of how they're going to achieve that. So, but I like that. I like, you know, what kind of leads do you want? Who are the right ideal people? And how are you going to impact their lives? Really? It's what you're going to ask yourself with those groups of people. So new and existing. And sometimes it's most brokers will tell me they prefer hiring new people because it's easier. Um, And it is, but they have to be productive quickly or they're going to fizzle out or join a team. Right. And if they, if they fizzle out, that was a waste of your efforts. And if they join a team, well, there goes your company revenue that you were planning on getting from that person. (laughs) So in any event, you know, people got to get plugged in if they're new and start producing. And that's where coaching and training those people at the office level, I believe is where it's going to make a difference, but um, just my thoughts on that. So, yeah, well, and, you know, just going back to kind of finding those ideal agents, I mean, you know, let's talk about, I mean, you talked about kind of the persona or the avatars to go after, and it was really based on geography production and maybe being part of a team, right? Those were the three primary ones. And we're super familiar with those because we built the tool around doing those things. A big part of that's MLS data. Now, up the front, you mentioned geotargeting for um, for new agents. Are you talking about new agents that are already in the MLS have sold something? Or are you talking about before they're even in the MLS and, and have any kind of production? No, brand new. Kind of... So how would you find the yeah. list of people that are brand new? I mean, would that be state licensees, real estate schools? Where, where would you get that? Well, the geotarget one is going to be... I'm sorry, brand new people that aren't even licensed yet. Right. So I'm going into Remind, which is a great tool in your MLS. Uh, I'm going into Red X, for example, and I and just getting a mailing list of names. So uh, I do pull through marketing through postcards that would go out from the manager broker to neighborhoods, 400, 500 people maybe 300. And again, this is where I, a neighborhood, I, I don't have an agent, right? So the first thing to do is take your existing roster and put them on a Google map by the address. And then now you know where all your agents live and you can zoom in and you can start to see the openings and the spaces where there's no agent, that you don't have an agent living there. And that's a real opportunity for you to target that street or street subdivision and send out, you know, 100 to 400 cards with a great message, compelling message that says, you know, scan this QR code, book an appointment or attend a um, career seminar, right? About a career in real estate. If you're using broker kit, I mean, I would campaign that right through my broker kit um, and almost have that as a secondary, like its own campaign for a neighborhood um, or a city. And, and those are people that have never been licensed before. And that's, I mean, I'm sitting in my neighborhood and there's an agent in this neighborhood who I did this with. She does 15 million now by herself, no team. I recruited her with this, this method. And, um, you know, it's just another way to look at things because, you know, we can recruit people. Every manager knows 10 people in their sphere of influence that should be in real estate. That's another great way to just look at who do I know? You know, who's in your sphere list that should be selling houses now that you don't sell houses anymore. <laughs> and um, we did that exercise years ago and I, I hired nine out of the 10 people that I put on my list. It took two years. Four of them were rookie of the years. So, I mean, you can really, right. what I'll stress here is that if you're looking for recruits, you know, the question you should ask yourself is when's the last time I recruited someone on purpose? I met them at a restaurant. I met them you know, at a, at a retail store. Um, and I physically recruited them. And this is like what every manager should be doing is not waiting for people to show up because your brand is the best brand in your town and they decided to get their license. You know, you have an opportunity right now to be a recruiter and uh, put that recruiting hat on and do it. But geo target farming is extremely, extremely successful, very proven to be a successful way to recruit. Yeah. And that's, uh, so this is gold, Sherry. I mean, and so most people are hitting the same list, which would be MLS production data out of an MLS data tool. Um, 
real estate schools, state licensees, right? This is new set of lists, right? That are kind of more greenfield that they're not hearing from other people, right? I guess the other way that I've heard of people kind of hitting that would be Facebook ads to, um, you know, buy on that geography also. Yes. And that, that tends to work pretty well also. Um, cool. Okay. So let's say you've got. Yeah, with, camp, a, with, know, a, with a great right. landing page, with a great landing page, right? 100%. 100% yep. Yep. And we, yes. uh, we, if you want to hear more, we, we, we do have those and we, inter- we have you a lot have of folks that. using great landing page. Yeah. Um, so, um, moving on to kind of closing, right. So you, so you, you find kind of like somebody who's the ideal agent. Um, let's talk about, you get them in for a recruiting appointment. How do you go about qualifying and closing them? Like what's, what are your recommendations there? This is like my favorite part of recruiting because, Honestly, if you believe that you are the most invaluable part of the relationship as a manager, and you should believe this, like you should say to yourself, I add value to my agents. That's I'm not just here to make sure the lights are on and sit at my desk and wait for people to come to me with transaction questions, but you really are a pivotal part of their business strategy. You are their, their partner. Um, and when you believe in your tools and, and your value proposition so well, the the closing of getting them to say yes is is so much more with conviction and passion and um, a real belief that you can make a difference for these people. So I always say there's one method of, you know, everyone saying, hey, we'd really like to have you at our company. Right. And people say, oh, I love my broker. I love where I'm at. I love my office. I'm okay. I mean, you know, I don't really want to change. And, you know, what we usually, we get stuck and we don't know what to say then. And so what I want to challenge you all listening to say is you can really sort of take that conversation up several, several levels to the most impactful messaging that comes with a firm conviction that you have a better mousetrap, you have a better model and they are losing money by not being with you. And so if I were talking to a recruit right now and I said, Lisa, hey, it's Sherry Johnson. And we were in conversation. Instead of asking her to go to lunch, right? It's kind of a soft, hey, I'd love to take you to lunch, right? That's not going to happen. Um, I say things like this. You know, Lisa, um, I know that you had a, a decent year last year. Um, and I'm excited for you. I have to tell you, though, I ran your numbers in what I call a cost evaluation. And I did a cost comparison of just last year's numbers compared to, you know, the comp plan you're on currently to compare to what you would be on here. And immediately, you know, I found 25 to $30,000 that you're leaving on the table. And I think it's really in your best financial interest to have a conversation with me and I can show you these numbers. And then I go on to say, furthermore, you know, after the cost analysis, I've also run an income evaluation to show you that through our coaching, through our training, through our marketing and every system we have here for lead gen, that you would actually double your business if you were here. And so what's another, you know, if you did 10 or 15 or 20 more units here, I know your average sale price is X. That's another, you know, $120,000 on top of the 25 to 30 that you should be making already. And this gets their attention, Jim, so much so Mm -hmm. that, you know, again, they think they're making X. The cost comparison report that I show them is kind of an Excel spreadsheet in my broker kit. I use the broker kit has the same thing, right? There's in there. So I can show them exactly what they're making, the effective rate. Um, If you are not a 100% model, then you're going to take out expenses franchise fees, et cetera. If you are uh, desk fees, right, signs. I mean, think about all the expenses that this person has that they're paying for out of pocket. 100% model is great if you want to manage all of those things. If you're a company that um, doesn't offer 100% and you pay for and manage those services and goods and services, then that's how you have to say, we pay for and manage all of these services and goods so you don't have to, which allows you more time to go out and do what you do best, which is list and sell homes. And so if you're an independent or a company with a franchise, but no desk fee and not a 
model with a cap, this language will hit people really like, oh, you know, again, it's a cost, I call it cost analysis, a cost comparison of what it's costing you to be where you are. And that's kind of going uh, strong and aggressive, but it's, you know, I love where I'm at. Well, actually, I guarantee you'd make more money if you were here. Now that line, you know, I have to know that the program I'm about to offer them, or you know, I like to give them three options. Um, the three options I'm going to offer that agent are going to be more money. And I think it goes back to also talking about the income potential of joining us. You know, we offer business planning, coaching on a regular weekly basis, not just once a year. I'm an integral part of the success story of agent A, B, and C. You know, they doubled, they came here, they doubled their business. And it was, you know, through our coaching program that we offer that you don't have to pay for. Right. And so I think what, what we fail to do is we don't hit them hard enough, you know, smack them in the, you know, give them this like, wow, moment where they're like, oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that it was costing me money. Well, yeah, we pay for signs. We pay for this. We pay for that. You don't have to pay for anything here. Now, if I'm a 100% model, it's a completely different conversation. The 100% model is going to say, you're leaving money on the table because this is what you're paying your broker, obviously, right? That's that's actually a great call, you know? And so my, my clients that are 100% model, they have the harder time, you know, explaining to people that this is for real and there aren't any hidden fees and stuff like that. But whatever your model is, you have to say, we have less expenses. You can work less and make more. And I'm fully convinced that you would not only make more money with my comp plan compensation package, but you would also grow your business more here. Well, I don't want to grow my business, Sherry. Okay. Well, why? Right. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right person for you. But most people don't tell me they don't want to make another hundred thousand dollars. So if you can, you know, what I say again is I have this cost comparison and an income evaluation analysis that I've done for you. And you know, Jim, people say, can you just email it to me? And I say, no, I can't because it requires a conversation. This won't take but 15 to 20 minutes of your time. What's better a day for you, you know, Wednesday at five or Saturday at 10. I'm good either day. And you lock down an appointment and you say, whether you move or not, like this isn't even a recruiting call. I, I have to say, it's so ridiculous. I tell people I'm like horrible at recruiting. I don't even like recruiting. However, I'm calling you because I know this is the most important conversation you're going to have with anyone. And everyone should have a health check, financial health check on how much money you could be making. You should do that once a year, even if you don't move. And once I remove all the reasons to meet with me, people are like, okay, I'll meet with you. This sounds actually pretty good. And I say, great. And again, I don't think you're making a move Wednesday at five when we meet. This is the first of many conversations. And, you know, closing people for the appointment is like a task, right? And then once you have them, you know, how do you communicate your value? And I, and I was talking to an agent um, at NAR this year and or not an agent, a manager. And um, he said, well, they can go anywhere for this stuff. And I said to him, you are missing the point. If you can't defend or show the 25 or 40 pieces of value that somebody gets from being affiliated with you and partnering with you, you shouldn't be a broker. Okay. Because if you believe they can get it from anyone else, you're missing the whole boat. So knowing your value, knowing what it is that your company does that no one else does and no one else does better than you. So I use the word exclusive a lot. You know, we have an exclusive lead gen program. We have this, we have coaching, we have, um, we have all these things that, and they'll say, well, we have that too. And I say, yeah, but yours isn't, it's not as good. I can guarantee you that, right? Your CRM, right? So make a list of all those things that you know, no one can get anywhere else, but at your company. And you know, if you're a regional teacher, managers, how to do this. If you're a manager, know these things inside and out and be able to, you know, fire them back. I, I have to tell you when somebody asked me for a signing bonus once, um, and a client of mine just told me that they, they secured a, a, 27, a $27 million agent team um, by using this line last week. And I just taught it to them, you know, a month ago. And what happened is this agent said, oh, I think I should be asking for a signing bonus. And I, I 
looked at her and I said, I'm your signing bonus. Like I'm the person that's going to help you make another hundred grand, <laughs> you know? And, and she said, Oh my God, you're right. And, uh, and this client of mine just sent me an email yesterday and they said, they use Sherry's line. I'm your signing bonus. And again, what do you believe that you there bring you to the table? You know, we are that, that was sales the managers price. that drive sales. For everybody listening, that was worth yeah. the price admission right there. That oh, line. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I like so the that, lines. Yeah. So that was gold, uh, Sherry. Um, clearly a lot cool. of experience with kind of the closing and, um, you know, everybody out there, ABC, always be closing, right? So great to start those conversations, better to close them. Okay. But now you've closed the agent, but, you know, recruiting them is only half of the battle to growth, right? So, you know, the best offense is a defense. Now you need to help them be successful, produce and stick around, right? And so let's kind of switch over and talk about that. So you've got this new agent. Um, let's talk about, you know, like how, how do you get them to production? You know, how do you, um, what are your recommendations on kind of how they should be onboarding them and coaching them to get to kind of production? Yes. And once someone is licensed, I mean, you should set the tone that they should have a listing in the first 30 days, you know, and that's not crazy talk. That's like hyper speed, get them into activities that will generate a listing. And that, that comes from the, the branch manager. I don't even say branch, but that comes from the sales manager at the ground level. Yes, they should go through your corporate and company training program. Absolutely. But the real magic, the real success that's going to happen is from you, their, their manager. And um, I think having, um, you know, I like to I like to train new agents as a group and, you know, recruit as a group, attract people and, and then coach them and train them as a group. And they, they tend to flock together. So if you recruit seven to 10 new people at a time, it's a great way to then coach seven to 10 new people once a week and have a new agent meeting once a week where you talk about what's in your pipeline. How many buyer leads do you have? How many listing leads do you have? You don't have enough, right? And let's get them doing those open houses, doing, uh, you know, the sphere calls, calling expireds, you know, do a mock open house, uh, take them to a vacant house and show them how to conduct an open house. And there's nothing better than you know, doing this with them. That is what coaching is. You know, coaching is not making people great. It's actually bringing out their potential and their greatness that they, they have inside of them. They just don't know how to tap into it. So when you're meeting with new agents that have just been licensed, you know, their number one thing is who, who can we get on your list? I have this thing called the Goldmine Pipeline. You can you can download it um, from goldminepipeline.com. There's a free ebook there, but you get people up and running quickly and fill that pipeline with, you know, three million, five million, eight million dollars in potential business. Those agents will be successful. And if we just you know, don't have reasons for them to come to the office, they're not going to come in. So every day they need to come in. They need to go through your orientation booklet. Uh, we give them a success plan and we say, here, our clients use it. And uh, I also call it 90 day boot camp. Let's get you 10 listings as soon as possible. And I said, people always say, oh my gosh, it's so high. I'm like, is it? It's, it's not really because Everyone who you hired wanted to make at least 50 or 80 or $100,000 in real estate. So that's why you hired them. So setting the bar of super low or dropping the ball for these people is, is unfortunately, it's a total reflection of, of the manager. And so we have to be getting them excited and getting them busy and doing something. Imagine the first time they list something, now they have a house to hold open. They're going to hopefully sell three to five houses off that open house. All of it starts with getting listings. Um, one of the things, even on you know recruiting ex uh, experienced agents, is having it seamless. You know, when I recruit people, I tell them day one you will have X number of listing and marketing presentations branded to you, ready to go, so you can just start going on appointments the first day you're with us. Not there's no downtime at all. Um, I think we make a mistake of you know onboarding people. We don't put them through, you know, a quick onboarding and have things ready for them. Signage, um, digital business cards, regular business cards, their website, all of that has to be turnkey and ready to go. 
day one when when a, an experienced agent comes over, whether they're three million or thirty million. And having you know, saying I have everything ready, we will have you know twenty six prepared, you know, awesome looking uh, marketing presentations that you can go on buyers, sellers, whatever, it's ready to go. And they're like, you're kidding. And the answer is no, this is what we do. We have, this is available and it's ready to go day one. I think, you know, when you're onboarding these people and they don't, you know, having excuses to come into the office, sales meetings every week, not once a month, not twice a month, but weekly sales meetings drive sales and they keep people engaged with you. Um, that, that, one hour sales meeting is not only an opportunity to drive listings and sales for your company and your office, but for you to re-recruit all these people and retain them and develop them. And we just had a client who went from monthly sales meetings to weekly sales meetings. She was at 90 agents in her office. Since April, she recruited 50 more people, okay, 40 more people. She's at 150 agents or 100, recruited almost 60 people. And a big majority of it is coming from her sales meetings, Jim, because they're posting them on social media and all the agents in town that are that are being attracted to her company now are saying, what are you guys doing over there? It looks fun. You, you meet every week. You have energy. There's high energy at your meetings. And it has become a recruiting tool to have a weekly sales meeting. So getting your agents in the office is not old school. This is not, you know, post-pandemic like rip the bandaid off, stop doing Zoom calls. And the truth is like your new agents, they need to hear the hustle and bustle of what's going on at the water cooler in the kitchen or in the bullpen. You know, I learned more from those top agents sitting in the bullpen. I was a $10 million agent. I was still sitting out in the bullpen listening to the $30 million agents. So get people in the office, have call days, schedule the call days for your agents, whether they're new or experience, get people in, get them busy, get them a listing. And, you know, if you want to call it 90 day boot camp or, you know, create a program that launches people's careers and you will be so happy you did that because um, nothing better than an agent who starts with you and, and day one has a listing because you told them during the time they were getting their, you know, license, uh, put your list together. You know, let's start calling people. Tell them you're about to get your license. And worst case scenario, we put that listing in the manager's name, right? So we want people to be starting quickly, not having a slow start, you know? And I think sometimes um, everyone waits for people to go through corporate training. And it's like by then it's been six, eight weeks and no one has a sale and no one has a listing. It's very frustrating. So how do we get them up and running quickly? You throw them in the deep end, you know? I mean... I had five, I had my first sale on New Year's Day. I didn't know what I was doing, you know, and my first floor call was a listing appointment. Two weeks after getting my license, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have a listing presentation ready. And so I have this thing, you know, stop getting ready to get ready because you got to start before you're ready. Like I'd rather your agents, your new agents have three listing appointments and have no idea what they're taking. And then you guys all figure it out, you know, oh, I have an appointment. Okay, well, let's get your presentation together. But if they don't have, if they're making their presentation for three, four weeks, right, they're never going to have an appointment. So uh, appointments make sales happen. And it's our job to get them, you know, going. And if you read Jim Collins, good to great, you create that flywheel in your office. You know, you create the flywheel and the energy and the expectation that we're here to work, we're here to be successful and you just joined the best real estate company, you know, in the world, my office, right? So <laughs> if you if you don't have that, you got to get it, you know, and and um I think it drives listings, it drives sales, it gets people excited and you know, if you have again, agents coming in, they're sharing with you what's in their pipeline and if you say to them, take the goldmine pipeline and say, okay, how, why can't you get an appointment with these people? And close the gap of learning skills and say, here's what you say to them, go do it. Next agent, here's what you say to them, go do it, right? And you'll be helping them. Here, here's the thing. When I do leadership coaching for managers, Jim, I always ask everybody in the first five minutes I'm talking to them, I say, are you a sales leader or are you a desk manager, right? 
And so I say, if you were to go back into sales, any of you, how many of you would be top agents? You know, and I throw my hand up and I, I would be right. And, and the top performing managers raise their hand. And I usually can sense that those top performing managers, you know, are, we're really good at listings, right? And they're really good at recruiting appointments too, because let's face it, recruiting appointments are like listing appointments. And I just know that there's sort of this lackadaisical view of like, agents are going to do what they do, Sherry. And I'm like, "Mm, you can impact them and you can be a very driving force of their success if you're doing that, you know, And, and that starts with energy and having, setting high goals. Nobody gets excited about average goals. No one, you know, so tell your new agents, let's get you your first 10 listings. Now, I'm talking to someone who has four kids under the age of four, it might be a different message, right? I might say, Hey, you know, let's, what do we, how, what's this business plan look like? Right. So I didn't even mention that, but every new agent, you should have a business plan with them and write it with them and, and say, we're writing a plan and this is what we're doing. And I'm here to help you. Your job really is to help put your agents in a position to succeed every day. And if, if you're not doing that, you need to show them how to do this business. That's the, the very best advice I can give you. Um, but onboarding is a make or break kind of a situation, you know, drip campaigns, using some sort of uh, follow up system to text all your agents to uh, get them into coaching classes with you, training classes with you and stay in touch with them. I mean, that they have to come in, right? This isn't like go online and read, you know, and watch the videos for your coaching class. I believe there's a, a great, you know, good combination of showing them, giving them online tools, but also if it's online, people aren't, they aren't necessarily going to do it. Um, so give them the three ring binder, tell them to come to the office with that book. They're going to make money. You know, if that's how you run your office, um, it'll be successful and, and those agents will have success. In fact, lastly, I'll say this. There's always one or two or three people in the group of people you just recruited who have the potential to be rookie of the year. Whether you have the award or not, you know, like you should be dangling that and saying, hey, you know, I think you have what it takes to be the rookie this year. Really? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's nothing better than watch having a front row seat to watch someone and change their life, you know, and Goldmine Pipeline actually is the key to that because it, it, and really in a nutshell, it's just putting all the buyer listing leads, putting all the buyer leads, all the listing leads on a piece of paper, adding it up. And you show a new agent that they have $8 million in their pipeline day one or month one, it's a game changer. Cause they're like, I can do this business. You know, suddenly uh, they have confidence and that's what it all boils down to. Are you providing the tools? Yes. They like showing them how to use the tools, hopefully to make money. And are you meeting with them and engaging with them and just giving that the, the biggest thing they need is confidence. You know, you can do this. Go get a listing appointment right now. How about get two listing appointments this week? So it's leadership and it's, it's our job to make them. It's our job to help them get up and running quickly. Absolutely. They're looking to you for that. Uh, more gold from Sherry Johnson there. So you know, we kind of talked about the talent well, funnel there, right? Which is what we believe one of the primary ways to bring leverage in your business is by surrounding yourself and building, you know, an organization of super talented people. But we also believe focus and focusing on the wrong, uh, the right thing and, and you know, not the wrong things in a given week or month or year are, are also, you know, huge leverage points in helping you kind of grow your business. So, you know, stepping aside, putting aside kind of the talent funnel as a broker owner or a managing broker out there to grow their business, how should they be spending their week? What, what should they be focused on that's really going to bring, bring them the greatest leverage so that um, they're really going to, you know, the time that they're spending has the greatest impact on growing their business? Every broker can, can look at their office the way it currently looks right now, profit, you know, company dollar revenue to the office, company dollar revenue to the region. And that's the the money you keep after you've paid your agent, right? So after, you know, you look at GCI and then you say, okay, what was the company dollar revenue? Um, The two most important places you can be focused on, number one is recruiting. 
And you have to recruit as if, you know, 30% of your agent base may not be there. And for every, you know, I learned this from, from Mr. Hanna, actually, uh, from Howard Hanna Real Estate. He used to tell me, you know, it's a two to one ratio. For every agent that you lose, you have to recruit two agents, one to replace and one to grow. And so up this and you look at the roster and you say, who's going to be here in three years? You know, if that list, who's not going to be here, right? So you got to say where, you know, I, I remember one of my offices, I was re replacing people more than I was growing because I had to replace them. I had to replace them. Now, the only good news that happened in that is I was replacing them at much more equitable splits. So I was, the you know, the revenue was going up. But the truth is the the only thing that matters is tap line revenue growth. And that is going to come from recruiting people, experienced and new. And secondly, coaching the existing agents you already have to greater levels of income for themselves and for the, for the company. So um, to me, where you should spend the majority of your time is driving sales. And that's going to happen by asking people, what are you working on? How many listing appointments are you going on? What's in your pipeline? Driving sales, sales funnel. On the talent funnel, um, it is imperative that you have a written recruiting plan that's in writing that not just says, I'm going to recruit X number of people, new and experienced, but it actually has the step-by-step, -step, Jim, of what action items I have to do every week to make that happen. You know, are you putting out uh, Facebook ads? Are you doing a drip campaign to experienced agents and, and campaigns, which is a great way to stay in front of those people? Are you hosting a, a you know a training event with a coach? We do this a lot. Um, coach your agents and invite you know experienced agents from uh, around and up and down the street in your marketplace that you want to recruit. That's a great way. You know, have events and add value and show people what you're like and invite your agents to invite people. Um, if you don't have a recruiting plan, you don't have a plan and you don't have a plan of action. And so. Having something in writing, number one, for talent attraction and making it a priority. So you have to say to yourself, am I really deal doctoring? Because I'll challenge you to look at how many sales you have for the month and how many hours you actually spent, quote, unquote, deal doctoring, right? Um, and, and if the solution for that is to time block recruiting because it is the most dollar producing activity you do as a manager to increase the profit and the revenue and the success of your office. And so I would say put recruiting is number one. <laughs> Retention is number two. And if it's admin, let your administrative coordinator handle that because admin is busy work. Just like when we tell our agents you're doing too much busy work and paperwork, you're not doing enough sales, you're not bringing up new business and you're not managers like to do admin. And I, I just, I will say it a hundred times Admin is not growing your office, right? It's, it's just not. So you don't have to look at every single deal. You probably have a compliance manager or someone in your staff that can look at those deals. I was at a company uh, years ago down in Texas, and Carolyn said to me, this is my office manager's office. And I said, oh, I thought you were the manager. And she said, I'm the sales leader, and this is the office administrator. And I was like, yes. That, that is how you have to think. So, you know, what if your job and your pay as a manager was only based on your success in recruiting? And I'll add another layer to that. The success of the people you recruited, right? So if you had to bring them in, A, and then you had to get them up and running and the dollars they were bringing in. And the truth of it is most of you have a comp plan that pays you bonuses like that. So, you know, I like when managers look at this and say, wow, I could bring in another $200,000 of revenue, get my office to this profit, and oh, wow, I make a bigger bonus, right? At the end, you kind of say, oh, I, I make some money too. I make another bigger bonus. So looking at how you look at your day, if you're sitting in your office waiting for people to come in with their problems, you know, you need to map out your week and say, these are the four days that I'm recruiting. And people say, how much time do I have to recruit? 
I don't know. I don't know how many people they have to recruit, right? So rather than say one a month, you know, we, we help people recruit 75 people a year, one manager, right? And she doesn't mess around with the deal doctoring. And I think you just have to separate what is that, like, this is what makes me feel good because my agents need me because they do. I get it. But here's what really is awesome, right? Two to three hundred thousand dollars of new revenue that starts at the top and drops to the bottom, right? That's a really big focus. So I had years where I didn't recruit and it showed. And I had years where I was hyper crazy laser focused on recruiting and boy, did it show and boy, did it pay off. Um, so it's a matter of prioritization. Awesome. Recruiting More soapbox. From- My recruiting soapbox no, is no, We love it. We love it. Uh, you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. Yeah. So, and hopefully some of yes. our listeners got fired up to, to go out and uh, oh. put a little more focus on their recruiting uh, going into 2023. I have, I have a, another tip. Here's, here's the best tip we give our corporate clients and our manager and people we coach that are broker owners and team leaders. And when you make your Excel spreadsheet of who you want to recruit, make another column that says, the potential revenue to your company, regardless of what kind of model you're on. So whether you're 100% or you have, you know, a 70-30 split for the first however many, whatever that looks like, make a column that says, you know, I'm going to write down Lisa Smith, $8 million, and I should get $45,000 of new company dollar from Lisa Smith. Put that column that I like to call projected company revenue, projected company dollar, and then when you add that up, you know, we coach people that the list is $500,000 if you got them all. Now, I understand you're probably not going to get all of them, but wouldn't that, that's like your gold mine pipeline for recruiting. Make it, you know, monetize the list. And boy, is that a game changer because now you're looking at that list saying, if I recruit half of this list, it's $250,000. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So that's what gets you excited is, you know, look at how your office looks right now. We call it Profit Builder. It's a system I created. You look at profit, you know, you look at the uh, makeup of your office currently, how many people bringing in different amounts. And then over on the other side, what do you want it to look like? And that's the vision. That's what it can be. Um, So if you have offices that are losing money, this is an easy math formula we can fix very quickly. If you're an office that's making 200,000, I mean, I took I took an office from two fifty to a million dollars in profit in less than three years by doing this little exercise. So, you know, and I had some I had a great manager that he grabbed on to new agents and he brought in over two hundred thousand dollars of new company dollars. Where do you think that went? Right? To the bottom line. So look at your prospects and add up the potential and do that with experienced agents. And then do it again. You know, the spreadsheet we have is for both experienced and new. And you've got 10 or 15 or 20 people in the pipeline to get their license. What do you think their company dollar is going to be? And add that up. It's another 150 grand. I guarantee it, at least. And so those, that should get you excited. Yeah, 100%. By the way, um, if for the broker kit users out there, a pipeline report kind of automates doing that for you, too, kind of within the tool. So, so yeah, absolutely. Pipeline reports. Which is awesome. And yeah, we love Burger Kit. We love Burger Kit. So 100%. Best tool ever. Best tool ever made. Awesome. Well, it, it, yeah, thank you. Uh, and that means a lot to us. You're welcome. Um, given someone with your kind of, you know, kind of skills and experience. And uh, those were amazing insights that you have brought today. Um, if folks want to find awesome. you online, where would, where would they uh, look for you? So our website uh, is sherryjohnson.com. And that's S H E R R I Johnson.com. Uh, we have a free strategy call that you can take advantage of. Uh, if you're a broker owner looking for recruiting solutions, uh, we offer uh, recruiting callers. So we have a, a call center uh, that's available. Um, that's awesome. I have a wonderful staff of exceptional recruiting coaches and, um, SherryJohnson.com. I do have a podcast uh, called You Rock, a real estate podcast with Sherry Johnson. You can go check that out. 
um, some great tips on there for coaching your agents, for recruiting interviews with other brokers. Uh, so there's some good info there. Um, but go to my website, schedule a call with us, um, or just download goldminepipeline.com uh, if you would like to check that out. But we're happy to help you. And, you know, even just if you did a 30 minute or 40 minute call with us to hear, you know, how the ROI of investment in coaching or investment in our platforms will help grow your company. Would love it. Thanks so much, Sherry, for joining us today. And thanks for our listeners to listening in. Hopefully you caught um, some ca actionable insights, you know, and my challenge to you is go think about what Sherry said and, you, you know, write some of those ideas down and put them to work, put them in your plan for 2023 because activity equals results, right? So please put some of these practices in your calendar, start working on them. And uh, please do um, continue to tune into our next episode on how to ramp up your real estate business but with a strong focus on your talent funnel. Thanks so much and have a great day. If you enjoyed our show, please add a rating for us on Apple or Spotify podcasts. And be sure to come back next time to hear more strategies that will help you grow your business. Until then, this is Jim Turner. And don't forget, you need to put some of these tips to work today. Thanks for listening to the Broker Growth Accelerator podcast by BrokerKit. This episode was produced by Jared White from InPhase Media and created and hosted by Jim Turner from BrokerKit.